All right then, gang. So we know now that we want to install a Redux Thunk so we can halt the dispatch in the Action Creator, return a function, and inside that function create some kind of asynchronous task to go out and communicate with a database, maybe. So let's install Redux Thunk first of all. So make sure you're in the right directory, then npm install Redux hyphen Thunk. All right then. So now that's installed, we can go ahead and use it inside our store. So Head on over to index.js. This is where we set up our store using create store. And this is where we're going to need to apply some middleware. Remember, Redux Thunk is middleware and we need to apply that to our store. So first of all, over here, we're going to import Thunk from Redux Thunk. So import Thunk from Redux Thunk. And then what we need to do is apply middleware inside this store. Now we do that as a second parameter inside the create store method. But first of all, we need to import the apply middleware function to do it. And we import that from Redux. So next to create store, we'll also import apply middleware. So now we can use that function over here. We'll say apply middleware like so. And this is a function in itself. And we want to apply thunk as the middleware. So let's pass that in there. That's what we just imported. So save that now. So this function right here, this could take in a list of middleware and it turns into a store enhancer. So we could add many different middlewares inside here and we could also have many different store enhancers here and they enhance the store functionality. So we've applied this thunk middleware, which is now enhancing our store with extra functionality. That functionality now being that we can return a function inside our action creators, which can then interact with the database. So let's set up now a simple action creator and see quickly how this works. So first of all, inside the store folder over here, create a new folder and we'll call this actions. And inside actions, we'll create a new file and this will be project actions.js. So any kind of actions to do with a project, deleting a project, adding a project, that kind of thing. So let's create this action creator then. First of all, we need to export this and then we're going to export it as a constant and it's called create project like so. This is equal to a function and inside here we'll take the project that we want to add. And inside this function, normally what we would do is just return an action, right? So we could return, for example, an object which has a type of, I don't know, add project like so, and then maybe the project that we want to add, which is the project that we receive into this action creator. So this is what we do normally, right? We return an object, an action. But now when we use thunk, we can actually return a function. So let's get rid of this. And instead we return a function. This is going to be an arrow function like so. And now inside this arrow function, we can take a couple of parameters. First of all, the dispatch method. And then secondly, get state so that we can get the state of the store if we need to. Remember this dispatch method here, this is the thing, the function that dispatches an action to the reducer. So what we're doing here, when we first call an action creator, inside a dispatch method from our component, and we'll do that shortly, we're returning a function and we're halting that dispatch because we're not returning an action anymore, just a function. But inside this function, what we could do is do some kind of asynchronous call. So make async call to database over here. And then when we've done that, what we can do is go ahead and dispatch the action again. So we're pausing the dispatch and then we can carry on with the dispatch and pass in our action right here. So I could pass in a type of create underscore project. And then after that, the project itself. So project would be project, but using ES6, I can just shorten this because the property name and the value is the same just to project like so. So this is good. What we're doing is pausing the dispatch we're going to make some kind of async call later on. Then when we've done that, we can carry on with the dispatch as normal. All right. So then let's save that for now. And what we'll do inside one of our components, inside the create project component, what we'll do is dispatch this action creator. So we're going to call this from the dispatch method. That's going to pause the dispatch. 
We can do something inside here like make an asynchronous call and then carry on with the dispatch. We're not doing this just yet, we're just kind of laying down the groundwork. Okay, so now inside our create project component over here, what we'll do is we'll dispatch an action. So first of all, what I need to do is import this thing right here, this create project action creator inside this component. So I'll import that create project and that is going to be from and then it's dot dot to come out of this folder then dot dot again to come out of the components folder then it's into the store then into actions and then finally we want the project actions okay so this needs to be store not at all so we've imported that I also want to import connect from react redux so that we can connect this component to the redux store so let's import connect from react hyphen redux okay so first of all what we'll do is connect this component to the redux store so connect goes down here it's a function which returns a higher order component so we can surround create project then what we're going to do is map dispatch to props we've seen this in the previous tutorial series so all we do is create a constant called map dispatch to props this is a function and inside this function we can take in the dispatch method so we can call it and then what we do is return an object and whatever property we want to add to the props we add to this object so we want to add a method to the props called create project right so that when we say props dot create project in the component then it's going to call this function and this function is an arrow function it's going to take in the individual project that we will pass it from up here in a minute so it's going to take that in and then it's going to dispatch an action creator so create project and we pass in that project that we took in right here does that make sense so when we call now props dot create project and pass in a project then it's going to run this function take in that project it's going to perform a dispatch and it's going to call this action creator right here which we imported at the top create project and that is going to return this function right here this is where we can make some kind of asynchronous call then we can carry on with the dispatch of the action okay this might seem a little long-winded at the minute and a bit weird but it will all fall into place soon now before we can access this on the props what we need to do is pass in this thing this function into the connect function down here but it's not the first parameter remember the first parameter of the connect function is map state to props now since we don't have that we don't need to pass the actual function we can just pass null as the first parameter then it's map dispatch to props as the second parameter all right so inside this component we can now access this Thing right here on the props object so let's go up to the submit handler which is over here and instead of just logging this to the console when we submit a new project instead what we'll do is say this dot props dot create project which we now have access to and we pass in the project that we want to create which is going to be just this so this dot state so let's pass that in there this dot state so that's going to pass this project down here into this function right here so it's taken in this dot state then we perform a dispatch we call create project and pass in this dot state the project that is going to run this function taking the project it's going to return another function right here where we have the dispatch again and get state at some point we can take that project and add it to a database make an asynchronous call then we can dispatch the actual action does that make sense okay so let's save this component over here and now what we'll do inside the project reducer is just take in that action we're dispatching it right here so we want to take it in over here inside the project reducer and then maybe do something if we wanted to okay so in the project reducer we first of all need to check the action type okay because there could be many different action types it could be create project delete project edit project and we don't know what it is at the minute 
and we want to do different things maybe dependent on what action type we receive. So the type that we send is create project. So inside this thing over here, what we need to do is detect that create project. And we could use an if statement. This time I'm going to use a switch statement. So the switch statement takes in something to evaluate the action dot type. And in this case, it's going to be create project. Then what we can do inside this switch statement is add different cases. So in the case that the value here is equal to create project, then we want to do something. And the thing we want to do at the minute is just console.log created project. And then we'll also log the project that we receive on the action. Does that make sense? Then finally, we're returning the state. So inside the project actions, we're dispatching this method and we're sending the project, which is just this dot state, this thing right here. So we're dispatching this. It's being received inside the project reducer. We're taking in that action. We're checking what the action type is in the case that it is create project. Then what we're doing is logging created project and action dot project and action dot project is this thing. So I hope that all makes sense. So let's save this for now and let's check this out in a browser. We do get a warning over here, which we will address later on in the series. But for now, let's just go to new project and add in a title just called test and blah, 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 and then create this. And then you see it's logged to the console created project and then the project itself. So all this is working. But the good thing now is that whereas before we couldn't add any asynchronous code inside our project action over here, now we can. We can add some asynchronous code. We can communicate with the database to add that project to a database right here. OK, so we'll look at doing that over the next few tutorials to begin with. We need to create a Firebase project and set up a Firestore database. So we'll look at that in the very next tutorial.